Welcome to my lecture online. Our next example involves a pendulum and a block. The pendulum starts with this height. It has a length L, a mass M, and it swings down and hits a block at the bottom here which with a mass big M. And let's say that the coefficient of friction between the block and the surface equals zero. The ball will bounce back to a certain height, making a certain angle with the vertical. And the question is as follows for part A. What is the velocity of the of the ball on the pendulum just before it hits the block? What is the velocity of the ball just after it hits the block? And what is the velocity of the block after the ball hits the block? All right, for part A, that's fairly straightforward. That is a conversion from potential energy down to kinetic energy. So for part A, we can say that the potential energy initial equals the kinetic energy final. In other words, the mgh is equal to the one-half mv squared. So that would be the v initial squared as it hits just before it hits the block. The m's cancel out and the height will be the length of the pendulum. So we can say that gl equals one-half v squared or v equals the square root of two gl. And so that would be the answer for part A, and we say that V initial, the velocity of the pendulum, right before it hits the block. For part B, we realize then the pendulum then bounces back and reaches this height right here, so we'll call that H2. Now we need to figure out what H2 is equal to, and if we draw a triangle right here, and we calculate this height right here, notice that this hypotenuse is L, this is the adjacent side, so we can say that this height is equal to L times the cosine of theta, which means that H2 can be found by taking the total height, which is L, and subtract from that L times the cosine of theta, or this can be written as L times 1 minus the cosine of theta. So that is the height to which the ball bounces back up to, and so that means that we can use the same concept again to find the velocity right after the collision. So for part B, we have the uh, kinetic energy initial equals the potential energy final. So in this case, we have the one-half mv initial squared. I'm just going to call it mv squared equals the mg times the h, which is in this case h2. Again, the m's cancel out. We can say that v squared equals 2g, and h2 is now going to be written as L times 1 minus the cosine of theta, and therefore the velocity, which now is v2 or v final right after the collision, is equal to the square root of 2gL times 1 minus the cosine of theta. And that is the velocity of the pendulum right after it hits the block. So now we need to find the velocity of the block right after the collision. So now we have a collision to, to account for. So now we're going to use the conservation of momentum. We can say that P initial equals P final. The initial, the initial momentum will be the pendulum coming down to strike the block. So that would be equal to the mass of the pendulum times V initial of the pendulum. That equals the mass of the pendulum times v final of the pendulum, so that would be mass times v final, now remember that's going to be in a negative direction, plus the mass of the block times v final of the block, and so that's what we're looking for, v final of the block. All right, so now we can plug in what this is equal to, we can say that, uh, well first let's solve for v final of the block, so v final of the block is equal to, hmm, m v initial minus m v final. Now be careful about the signs here, v final will be a negative quantity, and we're going to divide all that by m, which means that this can be written as m over m times v initial minus v final. Now again, be careful about the v final here, because v final is in a negative direction, so we know that v final of the block is equal to the ratio of m over m times v initial minus a minus v final because notice v initial is to the right but v final is to the left and so we have to subtract the negative quantity which becomes a positive quantity. 
So this can now be written as the ratio of M over big M times V initial. Now V initial is the square root of 2GL plus, because the minus times the minus is plus, V final, which is this one right here, which is the square root of 2GL times 1 minus the cosine of theta. Like this. And notice then we can factor out the square root of 2GL, which means we have the following. So V final of the block is equal to M over big M times the square root of 2GL. And then we have remaining, this would be 1 plus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of theta. And I believe that this would be a good way of expressing the final velocity of the block after the collision in terms of the mass of the ball, the mass of the block, 2g times the length of the pendulum, and the angle of theta to which it bounces back up to. And that is how it's done.